Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow was conceived and created by Kerry Conran, who originally produced the teaser version of the film on his home computer, which, with the right industry contacts, eventually enabled him to put the feature film version into production. With influences from German Expressionism, along with the 1939 World's Fair, which incidentally had the subtitle The World of Tomorrow, which the film also used, Sky Captain also shared similarities to the 1986 anime film Castle in the Sky. Unlike most films made in Hollywood, Sky Captain was a strictly independent production, which is how a lot of its wonderful creativity was retained. From a production perspective, in the mid-2000s, films using all blue screen sets with digital backgrounds were starting to become more commonplace, particularly with other more famous entries like Sin City and 300 utilising a similar technology. Yet despite the massive amount of freedom this offered to filmmakers, the overall success of these films varied with moviegoers struggling to accept the new technology over more traditional movie making methods. In the case of Sky Captain, it could be argued that the film was a little too ahead of its time because by all accounts it should have been a box office hit. But unfortunately this wasn't to be, and as a consequence Kerry Conneran has not made another mainstream film since. Whilst the concept of making heavily stylized films using only blue screen sets with digitally created backgrounds has now largely been abandoned. Yet on a more positive note, one aspect of the film which will appeal to classic sci-fi cinephiles are the various homages both seen and heard in the film. These include King Kong sitting atop the Empire State Building, whilst the venture itself from the 1931 film is seen shipwrecked. Alongside this are the robot guns using the same sound effects as heard in the original War of the Worlds, Godzilla appearing in a newspaper, 1138 seen on a door, Whilst the number 5 appears on a robot, which is a direct reference to the 1941 film Superman and the Mechanical Monsters, which was also an inspiration for Sky Captain. In all, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow is a celebration of nostalgia and classic movie making, and for that alone needs to be applauded. Another interesting concept of the film is the notion that Dr. Totenkopf has given up on humanity and wants to restart it using a new genetically engineered version of Adam and Eve, along with a Noah's Ark of animals. Somewhat ironically, the film is set in 1939, which is the same year World War II commenced, whilst Totenkopf's name is German for skull, which is also associated with Death's Head, which was the symbol used by the SS. Regarding Totenkopf himself, it's quite possible the film was the very first to depict an actor, deceased or otherwise, in a digital form, in this case Sir Laurence Olivier. Fast forward 20 years, and now digital actors have become far more common. Yet without doubt, the one thing which makes the film worth watching is its stunning and beautiful imagery, which actually required the production team to shoot the movie in colour, then convert it to black and white, only to then add the colour back in, thus creating the film's unique tonal palette. With this in mind, it's somewhat ironic that the only time normal colour appears in the film is in the Wizard of Oz sequence when it appears on the screen in the cinema. From an in-universe perspective, the film's focus is based around how career-minded people can struggle to have a meaningful relationship when their job takes priority, even at the expense of keeping secrets from one another. Even at the end of the film when Polly and Joe sort of reconcile, there's no notion that this will bring them closer together. If anything, it would be easy to imagine Polly rushing off to write her article of the Totenkopf adventure despite not having any photos to back it up. In addition, the film is clever in how it portrays women to be both weak and strong considering the year it's set in. Unlike Frankie who is clearly very assertive, strong and in control, Polly is almost presented as a typical femme fatale in some sequences, yet hard driven and tough in others where she can hold her own. As previously noted, it's her drive for the story which allows her to push past any fear or misgivings she has despite being placed in uncomfortable situations. Yet another classic trope of the film is the notion of secret islands and secret bases featuring scientists doing secret things. Although the concept of these mysterious hidden lairs has been around for decades, they have always been presented as terrible places where scientists are forced to work. Yet on a psychological level, these locations always pique the interest of the moviegoer based around the idea that the more secret it is, the more you would want to visit it and have a look around. With that in mind, despite Totenkopf's base being completely secret, Totenkopf himself still found it necessary to add display items and statues into the living areas of the base, adding a somewhat homely feel amongst all the functionality. Sadly, even though the film was a perfect candidate for a box office smash hit, 
For the most part, its memory has been left to sci-fi cinephiles and fans of classic nostalgia, and even then it barely rates a mention.